Okay, now you have to find your circuit breaker to turn it off. So ours just happens to be in this closet. As you can see, we have a number of panels. That's why we've taken and turned the fan on on the system so that when we get the right circuit breaker, we can go ahead and uh, uh, hear that it's off. Now, as in most houses, they have a paper panel that was th written in pencil originally and the pencil fades. If you're going to remark them, what you may want to do is remark them in a permanent marker like a Sharpie. On your diagram, if you have one on your panel, if you look at their number, it's one, two, three, four, five. On your diagram, that would be one, two, three, four, five. And since our furnace is in five and seven, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's this one. You simply take and you pull it back. And you'll see on over there, and it's exposed. Before we saw off, and that's where we put it to, is to the off side. If a circuit breaker is tripped, when you have a visual circuit breaker, most likely you'll see an orange uh, little bar come up in there. Even though it's to the on side, it's tripped because it's in the orange, which needs to be pulled back and pushed back into the reset position. Now that you've finished hooking up your thermostat, you can simply take and turn back on the circuit breaker. We went from the off side to the on side. Just as a point of interest, if you have a 220 volt breaker, which most furnaces will be, it's going to take up two spaces. These smaller ones here are for 110 volt, and these double ones are 110 volt lower current applications, which would be like a wall socket or a light switch. But something that uses a lot of power like your furnace is going to be 220 volts, so it will take up two of them, and it will be a much bigger breaker.